All right. So let's get started on 9.1. Again, we're going to be talking about something called compound inequalities. Somewhere in your math career, you talked about inequalities. And those are those things that weren't equations. They had either a less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. They said these, these numbers aren't necessarily equal. One might be bigger than the other one, but we can still make statements about them. That's what an inequality is. It's the, it's the alligator mouth that you guys were taught a long time ago with the little teeth, and it, it eats the bigger number. Chomp, chomp, chomp. That's usually the way it goes. Uh, a compound inequality says this. What we're going to do now is mash two inequalities together in one statement. That's the compound part of this. So while you have dealt with this part, you've never dealt with this part. So compound inequality means two inequalities joined by one of these two words, either and or or. And we're going to talk about the difference between those today. So compound inequalities, that's two inequalities joined by the words and or or. We're going to look at the and inequality first, kind of discover what that means, do some problems about it. Then we'll look at or, and these two are going to lead us all the way through our whole entire chapter. We're going to be dealing with our compound inequalities and or or. So let's look at and. When you say and, in usually in English, what you mean is something in combination with something else, right? And you want them at the same time. If you want to wear shoes and socks, that doesn't mean you're going to put on either shoes or socks, right? You're going to wear probably both shoes and socks at the same time. Does that make sense? And that's what and means in mathematics. It means you have one and the other occurring at the same time. In other words, it's an intersection of two sets. It's where two sets cross over. At the same time, what do they have in common? Does this make sense to you? That's what and means. It's, it's an intersection. So we're going to talk about and as the intersection of two sets. So the intersection, this comes from a, th from a Venn diagram, which I'm going to show you in a second. Hopefully you've seen a Venn diagram. But the intersection simply means if you're going to intersect two sets, what's in common to both of them? So this is the commonalities or the, the elements that are common to both sets. That's what is included in this intersection. And we use a funny symbol for this. When you're talking about the intersection, we use kind of, it's, it looks almost like an upside down lowercase letter n, except it doesn't have the little tail on it. Uh, this, it looks like this. Funny little n. It's, it's larger than an n, though. It's the intersection of two sets. You can think of it as intersection, right? So you use the little mm part. Doesn't that make sense? Uh, awesome. Good joke at Monday again. 7.08 in the morning. Ha, 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 ha. You're never waking up to laugh yet, but that was pretty funny. Uh, you'll laugh later when you watch this again. So the intersection, you think of intersection, it's the, it's the combination of both sets. If you've ever seen a Venn diagram, you know those are those circle things, right? Look like Olympic rings with only two of them, maybe three of them. If we call this like our set A, whatever that happens to be, and this is our set B, can you see the intersection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we call it the intersection. That's pretty clear to see. This right here, if you're thinking about a Venn diagram, that would be the intersection of these two sets. This is all the elements of A. This is all the elements of B, whatever they happen to be. This is just the ones that would be common to A. 
just the ones that would common to B, this is the ones that are common to both. That's the A ones and the B ones. So that would be considered the intersection of A and B. It's elements that are, happen to be in both sets at the same time. And the way we would write this is A intersect B. And that's the way you write the intersection of two sets to represent, you're talking about the elements common to both of them. Let's do a few quick examples just to get an idea of this. I'll show you how it's applied to inequalities, then we'll move on to the or word. So a real easy, well maybe not easy example, but one that's going to illustrate what an intersection actually means is, let's find the intersection of these two explicitly written sets. In set notation, you often you see these symbol, these uh, these symbols, these brackets, these funny ones that are kind of hard to draw if you don't have a master's degree in mathematics, you know. Uh, but you'll get used to it. You, you draw like a, an S and then a reverse S, typically, is, is how you draw that. So our intersection here, I was joking about the master's degree, you can all, seriously, you can draw that. It's, it's not that bad. Uh, just don't, don't give me something like that. All right? That's really not what we're talking about. It looks just kind of silly. Try to give me a nice looking bracket makes your papers prettier. So let's say our first set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll finish that off. And what I'd like to do is find the intersection with this set. And their intersection will be another set. So what we're looking for in the intersection of these two sets are what numbers that are in common to both of them or happen at the same time in both of these sets that we're talking about. So the first set, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The next set, 3, 4, 5, 6. What numbers are common to both? That's essentially what the intersection question asks. What numbers are common to both? Is 1 common to both? No. How about 2? No. How about 3? Yes. 4? Yes. 5? Yes. Okay, which number 3? Yes. 4, 5. We already answered that. How about 6? No. So we're going to write the ones that just happen in both places over in this next one. What, was the, what were those numbers again? Yeah, that's it. That's what an intersection is. It's just the ones that happen in both of them. Let's see if we can wrap this up just a little, little bit. This was pretty basic, just to get you an idea of an intersection. Let's see if we can answer some other questions. Let's say A is this set. I hope you remember this notation from the days of our, our domain, like a, a while back. Remember that? What's this stand for? How's that read? X is such that. Yeah, good. X such that, X, and then I give you directions about this thing. x such that x is an odd integer, or odd number, and x is less than 10, that's a set A. Set B is just simply 1, 2, 3, 4. Can you give me an example, I want you to think of this, give me an example of numbers in set A. Can you give me one example of numbers in set A? x is an odd integer, odd number, and x is less than 10. Give me a number. Seven is a number. I heard seven. What's another one? Five is a number. Great. How about six? No. Why is six not in, not in this? Okay. How about eleven? No. Why not? Good. How about any negative numbers? No. So the, this is really just talking about what numbers here. List them out for me. What's the first number in this set? One. And then. Three. Five. Seven. 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 That's it. Those are the numbers in that set. You just need to be able to identify that, right? Odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, that, that sort of thing. We're just talking about those numbers that are less than 10. So we're talking about 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. The set B is, well, just 1, 2, 3, 4. Tell me what numbers these have in common. Can you tell me that? 2 and 4? 
No. no, they're not odd. They're, they are all less than 10, but they're not odd, so they don't fit in both sets. So set A was the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Set B was 1, 2, 3, 4. The only ones they have in common are the numbers 1 and 3. So that's our intersection in this particular case. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with the word and so far? Good, all right. Now, we're going to build this up because you're, you're typically not going to see a problem like this. This is a good introduction, and this is a good introduction to get you to understand the intersection. Really, though, we want to kind of ascribe this to our inequalities and see how that relates to them. So we're going to look at one more here. You know, I might need some more room. Do you have any questions on, on the, the word and in the Venn, Venn diagram over here? Okay. Yeah, we'll look at these two examples first, and then we'll talk, start talking about and in combination with this. Look at your first set. x such that x is less than or equal to 5. Hey, can you give me a number in this set? 5. Why 5? Because it's equal. Less than or equal. Or equal. Great. Okay, I like it. Give me another number. 4. Good. Give me another number. 2. Give me another number. 3. Okay, give me another number. One through five. One through five. Okay, those are several numbers. Very good. What about another number? Negative five. Negative five. Why negative? They're all less. What about negative six? Would that work? Yes. Sure. How about negative one? Yeah. How about three point two? Yeah. Three point two three four five seven. Yeah. yeah. This includes a whole lot of numbers, doesn't it? Every number you can possibly think of that's less than or equal to five. That's what that represents. How about this one? Give me some numbers in that set. Three works because it's equal to. Someone else give me another number. Four. How about another one? Ten. Ten. How about ten point two? Yeah. Good. Or anything greater than or equal to three. Not two, not one, not negative, anything like that. My question is, if you know this set and you know this set, which we do now, can we talk about this set? where we have that word and in there. Can we talk about that set? Where not only do you have this condition, but you also have at the same time this condition, are there numbers that satisfy both of them? Yeah. Can you think of them? This was less than or equal to five, this was greater than or equal to three. Do you have numbers that satisfy both less than or equal to five and at the same time x is greater than or equal to three? What satisfies that? Four. Three, okay, three does. Three does because it's equal to? It's less than 5, definitely, right? And it's greater than or equal to 3. Does 5 satisfy? Mm -hmm. How about 6? No. no, 6 is not less than 5. Even though it's greater than 3, it's not less than 5. You have to have both. How about 3.2? Yeah. yeah. In fact, we have the numbers like 3 point, or we have 3, all the way up to 5, including like 3.000001 and 4.9999. All those numbers within that range are included in this. And there is a way that we can represent this on a number line. If you've ever graphed inequalities, 